من قلب العاصمة السعودية الرياض أهلا بكم في حلقة جديدة من برنامج كورة من الموسم الرابع عشر على خليجية thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out the light of being an active player. First of all, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. 
uh, Oliver Kahn, very few people, and I mean very few, knows that Oliver Kahn is not only a football icon, he is also successful businessman, very well educated person with MBA, Harvard experience. What would you like to tell us about that? Um, well, yeah, first of all, I was, I was a goalkeeper, you know, and uh, I think uh, I have no problem with that. I think this is a long time ago, um, but that's my legacy, you know, and that's where I, that's where I come from. And I think uh, when I meet people on the street, everybody, everybody recognizes, everybody knows Oliver Kahn, the goalkeeper, uh, the aggressive guy, you know. Uh, loud on the on the football, loud on the football field. But that was the time where all the coaches educated goalkeepers in this way. Um, and uh, yes, but then I retired in 2008, and this was a, a cut because after playing for 30 years um, on the field, I want to do something different. And then I started um, studying again, as you said, I. I made my MBA on, on university again because I want to do uh, something different because life is not only football and I dreamt to be a great goalkeeper but I also dreamt to be a successful businessman, an entrepreneur, yes and that's why I, um, after my career, I uh, went this way. When did you plan for your future after the retirement during your career? When exactly? Mm. That's hard to say. That's really hard to say. Um, because as a player, you know, there will come the moment where you have to stop. There will come the moment where you retire. And I think two, three years before, before 2008, I think 2005, 2006, you know, I thought about that. What will I, what will I do then? And you can repair yourself a little bit. But if the moment comes, the moment of retirement, your last game, your retirement game, and I made my last game in the Allianz Arena in front of 75,000 um, people, this is very special. And this is like you are sitting in a room, in a bright room, and suddenly the light goes out. The light of being an active player. Silence 
can seem so long There are miracles in life I must achieve But first I know it starts inside of me Oh, oh if I can see it I was prepared, but living the moment this is something. Uh, this is something um, totally different, and I make then one year break because I I needed this this break. And then, as I said, yeah, I prepared myself for a different career. But nevertheless, I stick. I stick to football, working for uh, at least one decade um, for the German TV uh, as TV expert for the Champions League games and also. Uh, for the for the national team, because it's important that you have this connection, uh, or that you that you yes that you have this connection to foot to football. Was it difficult for you, for an icon like you, to go back to school, <laughs> and surrounded by by students who they were actually your fans? Yeah, absolutely. It was a little bit funny, you know. When I uh, I remember very well, it was in two thousand nine. Um, yeah, when I when I got into the uh, into the when I came into the classroom and all the students were sitting there, and everyone uh, must uh, must introduce himself. And um, yes, I said then, okay, my name is uh, hi guys, my my name is Oliver Kahn, and I was a football player. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was really a an awkward, but also an uh, a funny moment. Were they treating you as a classmate or as a superstar? In between, <laughs> I think uh, I think in between. Um, but uh, you know the teachers. I think the teachers they treated me quite hard because I should have not any uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. And they would show, okay, yeah, okay, you are you were Oliver Kahn the goalkeeper, but now uh, you are here Oliver Kahn the student, and yeah. everyone should be treated in the same way. Okay, what what represents you more? The Oliver Kahn, the player, the icon, or the new Oliver Kahn? I think you cannot divide this. I think you cannot separate this. You know, uh, when I'm in, 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 in different countries, you know, everyone recognizes Oliver Kahn and thinks of Oliver Kahn, the player, and that's fine, you know. Uh, and, and, and I like that. Um, and I want to deny my my past. Yeah, that would be really uh, re your legacy. Yeah, my legacy. That would be uh, that would be really stupid. Um, yeah, but uh, on the other hand, I come into countries. Yeah, uh, not only for being uh, the icon Oliver Kahn, also for uh, uh, looking of, and that's typical for an entrepreneur or for a businessman looking for uh, opportunities, uh, but especially especially uh, in football. But you're doing very well after the the retirement. Guide in terms of business, investing, ad, uh, administrations. Do you have any fear that your, your success in this will, will erase your legacy as a football player? People will recognize you more as, as the new Oliver Kahn? Yeah, but, but, you, know, but you know that's okay. Uh, but uh, when I, again, when I retired studying and then I founded different companies and make my first experiences uh, in business, I also prepared myself by making business or founding uh, companies. I prepared myself um, for at least being uh, the CEO uh, of Bayern Munich. And all the experiences I made on this uh, on this long road, and it was from uh, 2008 and 2020, I returned uh, to Bayern Munich uh, mm -hmm. as a board member. And this were 12 years. And I make really, really um, important experiences uh, for myself in business, in entrepreneurship. And I think this is uh, very important if you want to take uh, such an important position. You came here in 2017. At that time, we had a dream and vision to develop our football system in, in, in every angle. And you were one of the first people who believed and that, why? Yes, I came to, to Saudi Arabia, Arabia in uh, 2017 and I worked together uh, with the Saudi Arabian Football Federation. We were um, doing some different, uh, different projects in goalkeeping, education. 
um, and things like this. And in this time, I felt this, um, yes, this creative atmosphere. I felt this atmosphere um, of change and everyone was uh, very uh, ambitious. And uh, yes, I, I like that. And as I said, we started uh, then different uh, projects together. Um, I connected myself uh, with the people and I found that always great because people, uh, you know, they were, um, they were curious, they were, they were open-minded, they were respectful and, and friendly. And um, yes, my experience overall in, in, in Saudi Arabia was, was, uh, was fine. And yes, then uh, unfortunately, then came uh, the COVID, COVID, the COVID crisis, and uh, after that, I returned to Bayern Munich as the uh, in the board, um, and then, um, but I try to help my connections here to the people, also to the Saudi Arabian Football uh, uh, Federation or to the Ministry uh, Ministry of Sport. So I try to stay connected. You still have uh, you still have contact with them currently yes yes absolutely i think uh, uh saudi arabia was the country i was uh, absolutely the most i think uh, between 20 27 2017 and today and i think it's normal if you connect with people and you uh and you have your your friends here and uh, this stays at, the, at that time it was only a dream i'm vigilant what made you at that time believe that this dream might come true? I was in the stadium. I remember. I think it was a game um, in the King's Cup. I don't. I don't remember exactly. And I felt the enthusiasm. And I felt the atmosphere. And uh, the atmosphere was great. And uh, people in Saudi Arabia, they were um, so enthusiastic about, about football. And they were absolutely ambitious. And based on the, on the vision of the Crown Prince, based on the vision uh, 2030, um, which, wa which was at the beginning in, 20, uh, in 2017, which yeah. was still coming up, I felt, uh, yes, that people, they want to reach something and they want to build something also, uh, also in football. And if you compare now the situation of 2017, when I came uh, to Saudi Arabia and now, I think this is, a, this is an amazing uh, uh, achievement in football in the Saudi uh, professional league. I think the awareness uh, which, which uh, the clubs created um, yes, by hiring such great players like Benzema or like Cristiano or like uh, uh, Sa like Sadio Sadio Mane. This is really a good foundation now from which um, you can build um, much more in the future. A lot of good players and talented moved to Saudi Arabia uh, this summer and this provoked some of the world media and they were having comments. Some of them are negative and positive. What do you want to say about that? Yeah, I think the football world was quite surprised um at the at the uh before before you um hired cristiano ronaldo they were quite surprised oh what's going on there what's going on uh, uh in saudi arabia but um you know from my point of view it's always um it's always good for football you know to create competition to also create competition um, um between the leagues and investing in football this is never uh, could never be a bad thing. What was your reaction when you heard that Cristiano Ronaldo moved to Saudi Arabia? 
I was also uh, I was also uh, a little bit surprised, but uh, at that moment I I thought, okay, they uh, take it very very uh, serious, and uh, then I heard about uh, the goal, the goal to um, belong. Uh, to the best leagues uh, in the world, maybe in five, maybe in seven, maybe in ten years. This is really, really ambitious uh, because there are a lot of established leagues, a lot of uh, competitor leagues uh, outside. But um, you know, if you speak with uh, with people, and I think the most important thing in that is the the belief. And people here in Saudi Arabia, they believe they can get this. They believe they can create an, uh, an, attractive, an attractive league. And why are we all doing this in football? Because we want to, um, yes, we want to show, we want to give something to, to people. And, uh, you know, football is, is pure emotion. Football is fandom and football you know, brings people yeah. together, as we all saw during uh, the World Cup I think it's the biggest thing in life if you can inspire, if you can inspire uh, young people, if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out the light of being an active player aggressive guy you know uh, loud on the on the football hi it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana network thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it. and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player.
what do you want to say to the to the media in Europe that were who they were attacking and th 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 this project? Well, uh, I think that's uh, we all know the media and. Uh, Yes, from, from, from their point of view, this is always, uh, especially from Europe, is always a very uh, traditional, uh, traditional point of view. Uh, but I think they were also at the beginning, um, they were uh, a little bit surprised. But I think everything is changing. The world is changing in, in, in various ways, uh, in all segments, in all sectors, and also uh, in football. So we see different competitors come up, we see uh, different leagues uh, come up, we see different formats arising, like the new Champions League format of the UEFA, which will come now um, in the next season. So that's, that's, that's our world, you know, and things are changing. And media, um, yes, they want to make... Uh, stories. They want to make their, their stories. And I think during the World Cup, uh, yeah, we, so you, we saw you, how this developed. You agree that we have the right to develop our football? Yeah, yes, ab ab absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's, uh, um, as I said before, you are, creating, you are creating a league and you are creating a competitive league, um, maybe uh, to the other leagues. And com competition is always, is, always, uh, is always a good thing. But it's um it's a long way and i think every everybody should be aware it's a long way um uh, it's it's hard work you know you have made a good now you have a good foundation you have clubs here uh in saudi arabia with a really outstanding with a, a long term with a long term history now you have great players in the league this is a good foundation and from this on now you have to build what is your perspective on this project? Um, I think now um, is, is the moment to think about um, how can we proceed, you know. It's not enough to, to uh, buy very good players. Mm -hmm. You have also to think about your, uh, your, youth, uh, your youth development. And I think it's very important at this point that you have the right people, that you bring now the right people with the sport DNA into uh, the Saudi the Saudi Arabian football, because managing a football club on the highest level is not like managing a company. So the question is: the mm -hmm. question is, mm -hmm. what are you managing? You are managing expectations and emotions, and I think this is this is a big big responsibility for all leaders uh, in football and yes from my point of view it would be very uh, important now to, pr to bring the right guys who can balance commercial the commercial issues with the sporting issues and I think this is um, the big challenge in managing a football club so money is not enough to develop football system no, I think we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of examples where you see that money is not enough. Um, also, also, also in Europe, because only buying players this is not enough. You have to find um, the right mixture, the right balance uh, in a in a in a team. You have to develop um, your own players, and then you have to monetize your fan base in a in in the right way. And to bring all this together. That's what I said. Then you need people with this with this experience in football, who uh, know how you can handle uh, such a situation and how you can start now um, from this point where Saudi football is at the moment. Do we need to do it better or different? Uh, uh, the best would be both, <laughs> but that's <laughs> different and better. But that's um, but that's that's really hard. Um, I think you 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 did a lot of things. Uh, you did a lot of things uh, uh, different at the moment. And um, yes, from 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 the base, the base you have now created in football. I think this now is a great starting point to develop 
further. What are the differences that you noticed in Saudi Arabia uh, since your first visit in 2017 mm. and today? Well, um, I think, yeah, I think a lot changed, uh, especially the, 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 uh, the visa process. <laughs> it's, going, it's going much more, uh, it's, going much, it's going much more faster now. So you see how uh, digitization digitization comes in and makes everything makes everything a little bit faster and and easier I think the quality of life uh, is the quality of life here is uh, is is rising yeah. and, mm. and um, yes um, you have here a lot of people here uh, I have a lot of friends here and I'm always um, yes I'm always yeah fine to come uh, to come to your to your country and see uh, what's going on? I mean, um, even uh, the younger, the younger generations uh, in Saudi Arabia. I think this is for them. It's also, yeah, it's also great to have um, this kind of vision in the country, which they can, uh, yeah, which they can thrive for. Yes, and these are all things. Um, when I came 2017, everything was at the was beginning. At the beginning, and now. Um, you see uh, that it's really that it's really going on, and it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference between um, yeah between talking about things and then really implementing. And yes. here you see the things really are implemented and further developing. I saw a video for you when you were visiting via Riyadh. How was the experience? <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was, it was really amazing. I, I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, malls, you know, but this is really one of the luxurious malls I, I, I've ever I've ever seen. And I saw the cigar lounge, uh, but they had no cigars for me. So this was really <laughs> this was this was uh, uh, really hard. Maybe you can change this, but uh, but uh, but I don't know. No, this was it was great. It was amazing, and I can I can recommend everyone to to make a visit there. Amazing. It's really amazing um, visiting Via Riyadh. Come here and visit the shops, visit the high quality, uh, visit the cinema here in uh, Via Riyadh. Take your time and yes, relax, enjoy. And I think, as I said before, it's great. And come over here and visit all these wonderful, this wonderful place. Oliver Kahn, the goalkeeper, uh, the aggressive guy, you know, uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player. Oliver Kahn, the goalkeeper, uh, the aggressive guy, you know, 
uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out the light of being an active player. Okay, future-wise, if, if you get the opportunity to work here, would you move your wife and kids with you here or you will come alone? If I would go to, a, to another country with a, uh, with a job, where I have to be uh, uh, 24 hours per day, where I have to work 24 hours per day, uh, then then absolutely, yes. And it's a very interesting, very interesting story. Um, uh, I remember sitting with my uh, with my 12 year old son uh, uh, in front of the TV, and uh, suddenly he said to me, "Ah, Oliver, I must I, I must uh, look now the uh, Saudi Arabia League because Ronaldo is playing, Benzema is playing." And uh, this was really, <laughs> this was really amazing, uh, and uh, that showed that showed what you have uh, achieved and uh, what you have developed. But again, if I uh, uh, ha had a job in a, in a in a country where I have to be, then uh, for me it's absolutely no thinking. Absolutely, I'm a family man, and uh, my family would come uh, would come with me. Back to the, to, to the project, how many years do you think we need to achieve our goals? Oh, that's hard. Uh, that's a hard question. That's, uh, that's hard to say. It takes time. It takes time. I think everyone should know that development in football is always long term. If you look at the example, maybe in, in Japan, uh, they developed their league now over years, you know, and they tried this and they tried this and, and now they found their way. And I think this is also very important. And that's what I like. People talk to me um, and I'm convinced, of, uh, I'm convinced about that. You have also to find, and that's what you are doing your own way, the Saudi way um, to, to develop football. But as you said, it's, a, it's, it's always long-term youth development, Inf infrastructure, um, the clubs, you know, all these kind of things, it needs, it needs time. Do we need to work on, on the regulations of the football system? You mean regulations uh, on the federation level? Yes, yes. Or on the, on the club, uh, on the club the level? The federation. I'm, I'm, I'm not too deep. Uh, I'm not too deep into uh, the regulation uh, topic. But I, th but I know that you are uh, thinking about uh, about the homegrown rule, for example, which should be uh, implemented in 2025. Mm -hmm. And the homegrown rule says um, uh, that a minimum of of uh, eight youth players must play in the must play in one team. And I think this is this is a this is a good way of thinking. Yeah? Because every league must find this kind of balance between foreign players and the players from your own country, players you are developing by yourselves. And um, also, is, uh, for one example uh, from Bayern Munich, it's, for Bayern Munich, it's always very important to have superstars, to have the best players of Germany in the team, but also to implement players from their own uh, from their own youth academy, because these players, uh, the fans, you know, they identify 
themselves very much with these players because they are coming out of their own club, mm -hmm. maybe playing in the youth of your own club. So these players are very, very important for identification. And that's why here you also have to find in a club a balance between these kind of, uh, of players. Oliver Kahn, the goalkeeper, uh, the aggressive guy, you know, uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player. aggressive guy, you know, uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it. and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player. When I mention your name to my team, that you will be my guest in my show, everybody was asking me to, to ask you about your time in Bayern Munich. What do you, like? you mean the 14 years as a player? No, no, no. Or no, the, no. no, no. the 14 <laughs> this is a, years. This is a long years, story. I yeah. think we would talk about no, no. for hours. The 14 years as a player, everybody in the world yeah, yeah. know about it. No, we want about the, the, the four years yeah. in, in Bayern Munich. Yeah, I started in the uh, FC Bayern Munich in the board in, uh, in 2020. And yes, nearly, it was now, until now, nearly, nearly four years. And it was clear. Um, that this that this would not be an easy, not be an easy task. It, it was it was a huge challenge because FC Bayern Munich was so successful in the last decade, winning winning nearly everything, two times Champions League, a lot of uh, a lot of cups, and and uh, also the German uh, the German Championship. So uh, it was it, it was not easy, and my job was to keep to keep the club. On the highest level, and at this time, uh, Bayern Munich was number one, uh, was number one in Europe, and it was um, it was a great time. 
It was not an easy time, it was a challenging time, but it was a great time because I learned uh, a lot. I learned a lot and, you know, if, there, if you come to a point in a club where you have different opinions or where you have uh, different thinking, different views about uh, certain topics, development, or a strategy or leadership and you cannot bring it uh, you cannot bring it together then i think um it's better it's better for uh, yes for both sides for both for both uh, parties to go their own way i have to ask you about this the german uh, germany national team a lot of things happened lately Whew really a lot of things and um, yeah everything everything started I think during the World Cup in in Russia you know where the chief, where the team was kicked out in the group stage again in in Qatar the team also uh, knocked out in uh, in the group stage and what I asked myself after the World Cup uh, the World Cup in Qatar maybe this would be the best moment you know to change the coach, you know, I'm not a friend. I'm not a friend of, of changing a coach mm. immediately or changing the coach too soon, because everyone needs everything needs time, as I said before. But uh, I think at this moment it would be better, and that's what they did now. After the game against Japan, they were defeated 4-1, and now they they will change the coach. But now we had a highlight. Uh, I, I think yesterday uh, we played. Um, against uh, France and 1-2-1. So now the atmosphere in Germany is uh, a little bit better because we have such a huge tournament. We have the European, the European uh, Championship uh, next year in Germany and we need a strong team and we must develop. And my hope is that now with a, with a new coach, maybe um, we could bring everything together. Before coming here, I talked to my son who's nine years old, and I told him that I will interview Oliver Kahn. I was shocked that he knows you very well, knows your legacy, charisma, and everything about you. How do you feel when you see the young generation that they never watch you, they never witness you, they never seen you playing football, know everything about you? Oh, this is a great moment. It's every time is a great moment for not only for me, also for for uh, for other for other players. If young people recognize you and see you maybe as a role model for themselves, and I think it's the biggest thing in life if you can inspire, if you can inspire uh, young people, if you can give them uh, purpose. And this is always for me. Uh, now I get goosebumps, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that's they never they never seen you. They, they, they never watch you play. Yeah, yeah, but that's because of the that's because of the internet. You know, they go they go to uh, to websites or they go to YouTube or, or wherever, and they can uh, uh, yes, they can. Is it difficult for you to to maintain? You mean to maintain this kind of role model? Yes. yes. Is, is it is, difficult? Yeah, this is this is difficult because you cannot be a role model in every parts of life. You know, this is not possible. You, um, I can be a role model maybe um, in my sport, maybe in discipline, maybe in, 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 in willpower or things like this, you know, but you can't be a role model in every parts of your life. So sometimes there is a little bit pressure you feel, uh, you feel as a human being, always being uh, a role model. But on the other hand, as I said, no, it's, it's great uh, to be a role model for young people.
goalkeeper, the, the aggressive guy, you know, uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player. aggressive guy you know uh, loud on the on the football hi it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana network thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it. and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player. On the way to the studio, my son called me and he's nine years old and he gave me a question to, to give you, uh, to ask you. And he said, from a young fan, why you never smile? <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you think that's right? <laughs> this is his question. Yeah, I know that. I know that people are people are telling that. Maybe, maybe because they only see me in TV and they only see me playing football. And there and for me it was not much fun. <laughs> yeah. On the field conceding a goal, you know. But this was I said this at the at the beginning. Um, this was my my style my style of play, you know, and the coach, my first coach, he came to me and he said, Oliver, I want to have this goalkeeper, you know, strong and all, and, and, you know, the strikers from the other team, they should fear, they should fear if they come, <laughs> if they come on your goal, you know. So this was the, the education when I was uh, of the goalkeepers, when I was young, and Would I think I interpreted uh, quite, quite well. Would you pass this to, 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 to the new generation of goalkeepers? No, because every, uh, everyone must find his own, his own way of playing. You know, during my career, it was Edwin van der Sar, for example. He was totally different than me. Or uh, it was Peter Schmeichel. You know, I think mm. everyone rem uh, remembers Peter Schmeichel, the great goalkeeper yes. from Manchester United. He was similar to me, you know, big guy and present on the, on the, on the field. And Edwin was quite cool and calm, and he finds his power in that, you know, in another in another behavior. And he also was one uh, of the best uh, of yes. the best goalkeepers in the world. So it depends on your 
character, you know, which style of play. You cannot fake it. You can no, you cannot fake it. It depends on your character, which style of play you prefer. Do you think one day we'll see you in FIFA? Pooh. Oh. Everything in life is possible. I, mean, I, mean, I heard. I heard someone saying everything is life. In life is possible. You have it all. You have the experience. But I'm not. You yet, are. You yeah. are icon. You are very well educated. Yeah, yeah. You got it on. Maybe you never know what life brings. The last few days, there was a statement by by Van Gaal, the the uh, coach of Netherland national team, saying that last World Cup that was hosted by Qatar was planned to be given to Messi by FIFA. Well, I know Van Gaal, and uh, he's saying a lot of things sometimes. So I'm not really sure if he really, if he really uh, said uh, something like this. Maybe he has some some uh, problems with uh, with Messi, with Messi in the past. And no, when I um, watched the games. For me, it was amazing, amazing how the Argentinian team were fighting for one guy. They were fighting uh, for Messi and uh, that he uh, can win together with the team uh, the World Cup. Finally, what do you want to say to your fans around the world? Stay engaged and be inspired from the greatest game in the world. Once again, Oliver Kahn. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Shukran jazeera. Aggressive guy, you know, uh, loud on the on the football. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you on my show on Rutana Network. thing in life if you can inspire if you can inspire uh, young people if you can give them uh, purpose and this is always for me uh, now I get goosebumps you know because <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake it no you cannot fake it and this is like you are sitting in a room in a bright room and suddenly the light goes out, the light of being an active player.